this video is to record um, some of the little nuances from the uh, six drawings from handout seven. This is the locating finger. So I have the top, front, and right side views sort of drawn. I'm going to go over the, the three things that are kind of unique about this drawing. <clears throat> First of all, let's go to the top view. You've been given instructions here that the um, dimensions show that we have a locating a finger actually that's a diameter of 32 and that these lines here and here and the one in the bottom are all tangent to that circle so I'm going to go back into AutoCAD and have it set up that way so that the center of the circle is at the um, uh, height of 21 um, and it's centered on this piece here that's in the correct position so what I would do is draw a line across here I don't know what length it's going to be yet so I just want to make sure it's tangent to that circle I did that by just tracking off the center hitting the quadrant and then just extending the line out and if we draw another line and I type in tan I want it to be tangent to this edge and I want it to be at this 30 degree angle so I would type in you know whatever length because I'm not sure what length it is so I'm going to type in at let's say 30 in the angle of 60 because it's 30 degrees from 90 not from 0 and that gives me the line I know it's tangent to the circle and if I extend that line down to this line that finds for me the resulting intersection now once I have that found obviously I can just take this let's trim it mirror it over to the other side and then trim in between the two lines here and I've got my resulting shape so you see those lines have to be tangent to that circle and um, have to be at that 30 degree angle and that's one of the ways to do it. Now over here lots of people usually have trouble with this. How do we get that arc in with the radius of 54? Well we know two locations. We know this was one of the points on the arc. This is another point on the arc and then we know its radius. It's a radius of 54. So I'm going to type in A for arc pick the start point and go in a counterclockwise direction pick the end point so I have to type in E for end to pick the end point and then you can see one of my options is the radius so I'm going to choose radius option and then 54 we should end up with an arc exactly to the right radius now I would want to track off of that line that I just created over here over to here so I can see where the depth of this notch here would show up here um, in this view and that in turn is going to give me a point to project from so I'll use my construction layer over to here so it shows me where this edge right here would appear in this top view because remember this is rounded so we're going to see a little bit uh, a little bit of that rounded edge and then it's going to go flat um, where we see these two lines so if I project those two lines up here that's sort of what we're going to be looking at in the top view but there's a little bit more to it than that and this is where the the uh, the more involved projection process comes in that's not going to look like that in the top um, it's going to look a lot different it's going to have actually some irregular curves here and here that we're going to see as a result of some projection so if I add the other features to this view they're supposed to be here. Those hidden lines we also need to project from. And these edges here we need to project from. Now what's going to happen is those edges will stop here and th this edge will um, continue out. I'm sorry I've got that in the reverse this edge will go this way and this one's going to continue out just like that so we're going to have this flat piece here and then there's going to be this shape that kind of comes around like that we're going to figure out what it looks like All right. now the way that we figure out what it looks like is I'm going to keep those lines where they are and um, I'm going to start plotting those points one point was found by using this hidden line so we're going to end up with an arc that looks something like this similar to that but we want to find out exactly what that arc is going to look like the only way to do that is to randomly pick points on this edge so I'm going to start a line using the near object snaps I'm just going to pick a point anywhere along that arc snap to the sloped edge and then bring that line up 
and then from the same exact point go to the miter line and over and that's one of the points on on my regular curve I'm trying to plot out. So I'm going to repeat that, making sure that this line stays straight. As soon as it's not straight, it's not going to be accurate. Go up to here and then over to this point. There's another point. So I'm going to add another point. And we keep repeating that until we had enough points to create an irregular curve. All right, so as you can see, I used several new plots, uh, points to create plots. Now I can go to the object layer, type in arc, and I've got one, two, three points along that arc, one, two, three points along this arc, and the last one, one, two, three points along that arc. So putting them all together, and make sure, by the way, that you snap to the right points. So let's redo that one. One, two three points. So you see how that creates a resulting irregular curve. This now becomes an edge that looks like that. That should be put on the object layer and then I can turn off or get rid of my construction lines. Now there's no reason to do this all over again on the other side so certainly once you have this laid out on one side let's freeze our construction lines. You can mirror it over to the other side. And that's what it's going to look like from the top.